My Ender 6 has been an absolute workhorse 3D printer for the last four years, but it's time for an upgrade. I really love my Voron V0.2, and the ideal replacement for my Ender 6 would be the big Voron 2.4. However, I really don't want to build one. Thankfully, the Trudon 2.0 exists. The Trudon is basically a Voron clone or derivative that comes mostly pre-assembled. It has all the features and functionality of a Voron while also costing about half as much. It's fully enclosed, has a Core XY motion system, clipper firmware, large 350x350x320mm build volume. It's perfect for printing the types of large functional parts I often need for my projects. Of course, I want to make this printer my own. I'll start with changing the hot end. The stock Trudon 2.0 ships with a standard E3D V6 clone hot end, which is probably fine for most applications, but I wanted something a bit more capable. I'm using the Fatus Dragon High Flow, same as in my V0.2, which has worked out great. Also, I'll have interchangeable parts between my two printers. Swapping the hot ends is pretty straightforward thanks to the open source Stealth Burner tool head. Simply download and print the appropriate mount for your hot end of choice. I also took this opportunity to install the RGB lights in the tool head. The assembly is pretty straightforward, but it does take some time with a few tedious steps. Definitely nowhere near as time consuming and tedious as building a Voron, however. I use these large bolts to hold the gantry level when attaching the linear rail carriages.
Once assembled and up and running, I made a few changes to the stock configuration. I changed the default DNS name from btt-cb1.local to trudon.local. You can change it to whatever you want. The Trudon 2.0 uses a Big Tree Tech CB1, which is a Raspberry Pi clone, hence the stock name. To change the DNS name SSH into your CB1 and edit the slash etc slash hostname file. While you're here, it's a good idea to change the default password, which is BQ. I changed the chamber exhaust fan definition in the Clipper config to allow manual control. I don't often need the exhaust fan, and it's kind of loud when running 100%. It also significantly lowers chamber temperatures. Changing the definition from heater fan to fan generic adds manual fan control to the main sail and clipper screen interfaces. The stock Voron clipper configs include the Raspberry Pi and MCU temperatures for monitoring along with the bed and hot end. I like being able to monitor those, so I added them. Just add these lines to your printer.cfg file and they will show up on the temperature graphs. The interface allows you to toggle them on and off. The biggest change slash mod I made was adding RGB lights to the top of the enclosure and the tool head. I pulled 24 volts from the power supply and ran it to a 5 volt buck converter to power the LEDs. The stock mainboard of the Trudon does not have a dedicated RGB header, but I was able to use pins PG3 and PG5 on the EXP1 header for data. I designed and printed these LED holder brackets, available on printables. They mount using the existing top panel screws, just use a nut and a large washer to secure them. The case and tool head lights can be controlled independently if you connect them to separate data pins. I have had a few problems with this printer. The first is part warping. The chamber is large and not all that well insulated, which results in temperatures a bit lower than ideal inside. I had planned to install insulation inside the chamber like I did on my Ender 6, but there just isn't room between the side panels and the moving gantry. The panels will have to be offset from the frame to accommodate the additional thickness of the insulation. I suppose that's a mod for later on. Also, the chamber exhaust fan, which is kind of required to print ABS, lowers chamber temperatures a lot. I haven't measured this, but the difference is quite obvious just by putting your hand inside the printer during printing. Some of the ABS parts I printed warped terribly as if they weren't in an enclosure at all. So I tried lowering the exhaust fan to 30% and that actually seemed to do the trick. No part warping while also being effective enough to eliminate the ABS printing odor. Tap kind of sucks. It's slow and the nozzle has to be perfectly clean to home, level, and bed mesh. That can be tricky to control as most materials want to ooze at least a little bit during warm up and after printing. Basically, you have to be hypercritical about keeping your nozzle clean, which is just a bit tedious. But at least your nozzle is always clean, so that's nice, I guess. I would love to try the new beacon probe instead. 
that offers much faster bed probing with higher resolution. However, I'll stick with Tap for now. It does work, and I'm just not too excited about more mods, rebuilding the tool head, and clipper configuration mess, at least for the time being. Documentation, service, and support are spotty at best. The manufacturer, Vividino, doesn't seem to have any official website, and Googling that name just brings up various retailers to purchase the printer. There's no mention of warranty, repository for documentation, or manufacturer contact info that I could find. Upon ordering the printer from Formbot, they did email me the assembly manual and a quick start guide manual of sorts, which was adequate to be fair. Pretty much all the support you're gonna get with this printer is gonna come from the community, which if you're considering a Voron, well, that's pretty much what you'd expect anyway. At the time of making this video, support and documentation can be found. YGK3D's YouTube and GitHub. The Formbot Discord server. And from Team Gloomy. This lack of service and support is not a deal breaker for me as I pretty much expect to self-service my printers anyway, but I thought it was important to highlight for anyone considering purchasing this printer. Here's a few of the things I've printed. A test part for my telescope in PLA just to test the large print volume. Then a Voron cube in carbon fiber polycarbonate to see how this printer would handle the material. This ABS soap dish because I had some leftover ABS from forever ago and I wanted to try ABS printing and see how the exhaust fan would filter the smell. The big project so far was new front ring sections for my telescope. I redesigned these parts to be much lighter. The first version came out super heavy and much stronger than necessary. This meant that I needed a lot of counterweight at the rear of the telescope for balance. The new parts are about half a pound lighter, which saves three pounds in the rear. And I'm currently printing parts for my next project, another open source telescope accessory, so make sure to get subscribed to check that out, hopefully soon. Overall, I'm quite satisfied with this printer, especially for the price. At $1,100, it's about half the price of a Voron kit with pretty much the same performance and capabilities without the time-consuming assembly. It's fully enclosed, stationary bed, large build volume, auto bed leveling, high-ish temperature material capable, high speed, filtered exhaust fan, clipper firmware, open source architecture. It's pretty much my dream printer. Now my main problem is coming up with projects to print on this machine. Let me know what you'd like to see me build next. Thanks for checking out the video guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.